people said I was like my mother, intelligent and beautiful, but foolish in love. When my mother was born, she was the precious princess that everyone wanted. But she was betrothed to James the of Scotland to cement the alliance between the two countries. James the was brave, intelligent, and handsome. Although King James was 16 years older than her, their marriage seemed to be quite happy. They had four sons and two daughters who were stillborn in just seven years. Although only my brother James survived when the king died after battle in 1513. My mother was totally against that fight between her husband and her brother, but there was nothing she could have done. Despite her being the sister of the enemy king, her husband picked her as the regent of Scotland. It must be difficult for my brother my mother to have to deal with the political situation in Scotland, all while trying to raise her two infant sons and as a widow. But she managed to conclude peace with England in 1514, and she managed to reconcile the contending pro-France party, leaving John Stuart, the Duke of Albany, and the pro-English party. But she needed friends and political allies. She thought that she had found both of those in my father. Archibald Douglas VI, was the Earl of Argus. He was powerful and he was charming. You can't blame my mother for falling for him. He was quite a catch and quickly they married. However, my mother lost her position as regent and custody of her two young sons because the late king's will specifically named her as regent only until she remarries. The Duke of Albany took over custody of my two brothers and forced my mother, who was pregnant with me at the time, to retreat to Edinburgh Castle. Fearing for my mother and my two brothers' safety, my uncle Henry VIII urged my mother to flee. She took the advice and fled to England. I was born right after, and she crossed the border and arrived in Harbottle Castle. Two months after I was born, my brother, Alexander the Duke of Ross, died. My uncle blamed my mother for leaving and leaving the two infant sons behind. A year after I was born, my mother went back to Scotland. But soon she found that her husband was quite happy without her. Actually, he'd been busy spending her money on his mistresses. So my mother was so angry, she wrote to my uncle for help. But my uncle, Henry VIII, was not supportive. So my mother sought help from the Duke of Albany, the most powerful man in Scotland at the time. She wanted a divorce so badly, she wasn't thinking of what would happen to me. Actually, I think my mother cared only about my brother. King James. Of course he was the king and I'm really nobody. But I was close to my father. The fight between my parents went nuclear in the 16th century. My mother would ally with my father's political enemies to intimidate my father. And then my father would spread rumors about her love affairs in an attempt to destroy her. Amazingly, my uncle Henry VIII was always on the side of my father, condemning his sister. During this power struggle, my mother made several calculated moves to regain her power. After allied with Duke of Albany, she teamed up with the Earl of Aran. She removed him from power by declaring her 12-year-old son ready to rule. However, she made a miscalculation when she allied with Henry Stuart, a terrible man who was six years her junior. He only wanted her money and power so he could spend it on other women. It was so much drama. Soon my uncle, Henry VIII, decided to solve his sister's marital problem by sending her husband back to her. When she refused to allow his entry, she ordered cannons fired at him. She became the first lady charged with attempting to murder her husband with cannons. The cannon didn't kill my father. Actually, firing the cannon backfired at my mother, and she soon had to accept him into the Regency Council. My father then took custody of the young king and put him under house arrest. For the next three years, my father controlled the king, which made the king hated by all the Douglas, including me. He also developed hatred for his uncle, Henry VIII, as he was the power behind my father. In June of 1528, King James finally got the help he needed to get rid of my father. My father sent me to England for my safety that same year. 
My mother got her divorce and was granted by the Pope. She wasted no time in marrying Henry Stewart, Lord Methven. My mother soon found her third husband to be a rare find, a husband worse than the second one. But she had to settle with him because she couldn't get a second divorce. When my father lost control of the king, she sent me to England. I lived at Norham Castle in 1528. My godfather, Cardinal Wolsey, he took care of me. And upon his death two years later, I moved to stay with my cousin Mary at the royal palace in Baloo. My uncle was kind to me and very close to my cousin Mary Tudor, later known as Bloody Mary. We were very close and I was the one to comfort her when her parents' marriage fell apart. Believe me, I know how hard that is for a teenage girl. But I can't grieve with her. I live under the generosity of my uncle, so I became lady in waiting to his new queen, Anne Boleyn. Queen was kind, and her uncle, Thomas Howard, was charming. When the encouragement of the queen and acknowledgement of the king, that's how I found my soulmate. We were secretly engaged in late 1535. However, when Uncle Henry turned against Queen Anne in 1536, he turned against me also. He forgot the silent blessing he once gave me. Me and Thomas, actually, because the both of us were in the Tower of London. The last time we saw each other, we vowed to love each other forever. When Parliament condemned Thomas to death for breaking the Act of Attainer, I realized I had to leave him in order to save him. I vowed that I would never see him again. As a result, I was released on October 29th, 1537, and then Thomas died October 31st, 1537. Did I forget Thomas? Of course not. How could I? I thought I would never love again. But when I met Charles Howard in 1540, I thought I was given another chance for happiness. He was just like late Uncle Thomas. He was gentle, he was sweet. I thought the king would be kind this time, since he was so madly in love with Charles' sister, the fifth queen, Catherine Howard. But the king put me back to the Tower of London. My mom tried to save me by asking King Henry to send me to her, but the king ignored the request, and my mother ended up dying the next year. The king released me after he felt I'd learned my lesson. And I did. I locked up my heart, till my uncle gave me the key in Matthew Stewart the fourth Earl of Lennox. Matthew was the fourth in line to the Scottish throne, but he gave up his right to the throne in exchange for my hand. When he fought with the English, he lost his entire estate in Scotland. But he told me he didn't mind. He didn't even mind burning in hell for eternity if he could have one day with me. To him, I was his princess waiting for rescue. And for me, he was the knight in shining armor. Finally, we found each other. I was so happy when our son Henry was born, but he soon died. Then in 1545, I had a second son. I also named him after my uncle, Henry. I couldn't have wished for a more perfect boy. Henry was intelligent, handsome, and even talented in music. He was perfect in every way. I knew Henry wanted brothers and sisters, but every pregnancy ended up in a disaster. I had eight children but only Henry and Charles survived. When my cousin Mary Tudor became queen, I thought she would leave the crown to me. And I'm not only her closest friend, we actually share the same beliefs. She was a defender of my old faith. And I not only had the best right to the throne, but I had this, the two healthy, smart, intelligent sons, and they both had royal blood. However, seeing what happened to her cousin, Jane Grey, Queen Mary decided to leave the crown to her half-sister, Elizabeth, to protect us. Elizabeth hated me. She put us under house arrest when I did absolutely nothing wrong. I know England is no longer safe. So that's why I started planning our next move, to Scotland. Matthew lost all of his estate and title when he took sides with the English when they invaded Scotland. But things have changed, and I was sure that Queen Mary of Scots couldn't refuse granting favor on her cousin's wedding day. 
So I sent my 14-year-old Henry to congratulate the Queen's wedding and asked for her to restore our title and our estate. The Queen promised to help when she could, and she even gave Henry a thousand gold crown. Although I never liked my brother James, I know the family tie with the Queen is the most important political asset. So the, when the opportunity knocked, Queen Mary and her, after her first husband, King Francis, died, I immediately proposed for her to marry my son Henry, which is, of course, she refused. But she can't stay in France forever as the Queen. So she went back to Scotland in 1561. And as a Catholic queen in a Protestant country, she really needed allies and support. She knew Scottish nobles would treat her like a real queen if she was named the heir to the English throne. So she sent William Maitland as the ambassador to England, hoping to convince Queen Elizabeth to name her as the heir. Queen Elizabeth told Queen Mary that she would consider it if Queen Mary agreed to marry one of the three English noblemen that she chose. The choices were the Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Howard, and my son, Henry Stewart, or Robert Dudley, the Queen's Master of Horses. Queen Mary was humiliated when Robert's name was even mentioned, but she was willing to consider my Henry. Elizabeth immediately withdrew the Duke of Norfolk and my Henry and left only Robert Dudley on the table. Knowing the door to get the crown of Scotland was closing quickly, I put an impossible plan to work. With the approval of the Scottish Parliament, Queen Mary restored our name and our estate. The Queen asked me, my son Charles and Henry, to stay in England, obviously as hostages. But I convinced Queen Elizabeth needed Henry's help, and the Queen hesitantly gave Henry three months in Scotland. Henry packed my best jewelry to buy support in Scotland. As planned, my big diamond won the support of the Lord of Murray. He was my nephew. My offer to acknowledge my cousin as Earl of Angus caught their endorsement on Henry. And in three months, Henry won praises for everyone and grabbed the heart of the Queen. However, the Queen decided to give her hand to Robert Dudley so that she could be named as England's heir apparent. Poor Queen Mary didn't know, but Queen Elizabeth, she couldn't fool me. She never intended to name Mary as her heir. She used Mary only to test her boyfriend, Robert Dudley, to see if he would accept the crown of Scotland with the young, beautiful queen instead of staying loyal to her. Robert did not take the bait. Queen Mary did. And when Robert Dudley refused to marry Queen Mary, she was humiliated. So Queen Mary agreed to marry Henry. Queen Elizabeth was shocked and furious and put me into the, the Tower of London. Oh, the Tower of London. The place I first lost my freedom and my first love 30 years ago. The place where my uncle chopped the heads off of two of his queens, but I'm not afraid this time. He fulfilled our dynastic dream, and I have no regret, even if I lose my life in the darkest corner of this tower. However, Matthew and Henry were like two lost kids. I planned every move for them to get the crown, but I left no instruction on what to do after. And with me in the tower, they didn't know what to do. People said Henry behaved badly and Matthew was immature like a child. I hope all these people can be charged with treason. It was their duty to serve the king. They let him down and it was all their fault. I hope Queen Elizabeth would one day release me when she realized it was not my fault. And during the wait, good and bad news came through. Queen Mary got pregnant and a few months later, my grandson was born. Henry got crazy and killed the Queen's secretary and then changed sides and tried to escape with the Queen. But no one can prepare me for what happened next. A news that came to me in February of 1567. The Queen released me with the news that both Matthew and Henry were assassinated. The words were like knives and I went crazy. I cried, I screamed. I just wanted to kill everyone because they had all left me down. If not for Charles, I would have killed myself. And then I learned that Matthew was unharmed. So only my Henry died. 
Then my strength came back. I couldn't die. I had to find Henry's killer and avenge it. Matthew and Charles needed me. After Henry's death, a long list of suspects appeared. If it were up to me, I would have just killed them all. Matthew thought Buffalo did it. He was in charge of Edinburgh security, and Henry was under his watch. A trial was held, and he was found not guilty. But then he married Queen Mary. That slut. How could she lay in the arms of another man after her murdered husband was in his cold grave? Matthew and I begged Queen Elizabeth to execute her for killing my son. We cried so hard that Queen Elizabeth had guards pulled out when we refused to leave. Then the Protestant lords turned against Queen Mary, forcing Bothwell into exile, and they held the queen in the Lochleven castle. She was forced to abdicate the, the crown to my grandson James. When she miscarried by Bothwell, everyone thought she would soon die, but she escaped. She fought with 6,000 men, but she lost. She fled to England, seeking help from Queen Elizabeth. Help? There was no help. She was held for 18 years before Queen Elizabeth cut her head off. As for us, Matthew was a broken man. Oh, Margie, Margie, can you forgive me? I couldn't protect Henry, and now he's dead. I am so sorry. Will you please forgive me? Matthew, I can't forgive myself. I sent him to his death. I have failed you, and I have failed him. Don't say that. We still have Charles. We must get revenge. Yes. Yes, we must get revenge. When we finally saw each other again, he cried like a baby. I didn't blame him for Henry's death. He was lost without me, and he didn't know what to do to protect our son. Then Matthew accepted the dangerous job as regent for Scotland. When he took over from Lord Murray, he was assassinated in 1570. Of course Matthew took that job. It was the job he wanted his entire, his entire life. All of this, in all of it, Matthew had one dream. A dream of revenge for the death of his father. Now he had that job and he wished for revenge for the killing of his father and his son. He went on to destroy his cousins, the Hamiltons, for killing his father. However, in 1571, he was shot when the last of the Hamilton clan, the Earl of Huntley, Claude Hamilton, attacked Stirling Castle. He died in the crossfire. I was a poor woman after losing Matthew. I had nothing, nothing in my name. No income, but I'm a fighter, and I will fight to the death. Charles can't even inherit his father's title as Earl of Lennox, which should have been passed to him, but it was passed to my grandson, James. But I had to fight for Charles. I was all I had. Eventually, Charles was given a new created title as the first Earl of Lennox. So we had to support ourselves with rent from Scotland. Charles turned out to be just like Henry. His good look and noble blood caught the eye of many ladies, but no one would risk their lives for him. No one would dare to love Charles except for Elizabeth Cavendish. Although she didn't have an impressive family, she had his heart. I refuse to pull them apart. After all, the act of attainer applies only to the queen's family, and the queen never treated us like family. However, when Queen Elizabeth learned about their hasty marriage, she put me in the lower tower of London again. I was released after the Queen learned about Charles's death at age 21. I was greeted by my daughter-in-law, Elizabeth, and my granddaughter, Lady Arabella Stewart, who I finally met. After Charles's death, Arabella was my last hope, but the Scottish Parliament refused to grant Arabella the title and the land in Scotland. My grandson, James, couldn't help me. And when he was a minor, he didn't even have the power to grant estate. So I died when Arabella was only three, and my servant took all the jewelry I left for her and fled to Scotland. Then Arabella lost her mother at six. She was raised by her maternal grandmother, Bess of Hardwick. My Arabella was such an intelligent girl. She learned Latin, Greek, French, Italian, and Spanish. 
She even studied philosophy and was an accomplished musician. On her first visit to the court of Queen Elizabeth... So you're Arabella? Yes, Your Majesty. Glad to have finally met you. I'm Arabella Stewart, Countess of Lennox. My father was Charles Stewart, Earl of Lennox. How old are you? I'm 12 years old, Your Majesty. You remind me of myself when I was your age. Thank you, Your Majesty. I am honored for your kind words, and I am proud of my Tudor blood. Arabella made such an impression that Elizabeth openly spoke about having my 12-year-old granddaughter as queen. I like that girl. She could be a queen someday. But Queen Elizabeth did not allow her the chance to marry. Arabella thought things may be better when her cousin James took over. And then Arabella's secret betrothal to William Seymour was made public. William was a descendant to my aunt, Mary Tudor, so Arabella's marriage to him would pose a serious threat to King James because he wasn't born in England. Arabella and William tried to escape to France for a new life, but Arabella's boat was intercepted by the English Navy. She was sent back to the Tower of London. Unlike me, who spent countless days waiting for the mercy from the king, Henry or Elizabeth, Arabella killed herself by refusing to eat. Many times I cried With tears dropped like the snow